There were a lot of strange decisions that Sony made during the Vita's life and even leading up to its release. We talked about the memory cards at length, them partnering with AT&T as their mobile carrier for the system, and just flat out forgetting about it after about three years. But Sony did something even weirder than all of that. They made the PlayStation TV. It, it's an odd thing. They took the Vita and shrunk it down into this mini system. It was only on the market in the US for a little over a year and in Japan, about two or three years. So it wasn't around that long. In fact, this was created when Sony started to forget about the Vita. But I've always wanted to take a look at one of these and I went ahead and brought, actually bought this one from Japan, imported it because it is the PlayStation Vita TV, the white model. Now, these are region free, so I can still play them without any issue. I just have to change the language from uh, Japanese to English. But I thought today we would take a look at it take it apart, of course, and even talk a bit about it. So if you guys enjoy this look at the PlayStation Vita TV, make sure you guys put a like on the video on the way out. And we're gonna start with an unboxing of this guy. And I was really happy to get the white variant because while these are getting harder to find, getting a white variant model is even more difficult. These were the ones that were exclusive to Japan. The only ones I ever saw in my area were the black PlayStation Vitas. And they even had a bundle that they were basically fire sailing at one point for like $35 in Walmarts and Targets and all these places in order just to get rid of them. Like I said, there was only around for about a year, but since the Vita has started to take off again and grow in value, so have these PlayStation Vita TVs to where they are now worth more than they were at original retail where they originally were about $100 brand new. Now these things are like $150. It was, uh, it's definitely strange to see these jump in price so much, but I guess scarcity drives demand. So here is the system itself. They have it kind of wrapped in this like cellophane and it is, like I said, the white model from Japan. I do like the look of this white PlayStation Vita TV. On the back here, we have memory card slot, power button, a USB port, we have ethernet, HDMI, and then our power input that appears to be, for the most part, proprietary. I'm sure you could find one that matches up to it. It's just a five volt, I believe, a two amp adapter, and those shouldn't be too terribly difficult to find. On the front, there's not a lot. We just have a power indicator light here that'll light up when it's on, and then the, the Sony logo right here. Now on the bottom, it's kind of hard to see, but we do have printing of PlayStation Vita TV here with the model VTE 1000. I thought it was very strange that they didn't put any type of rubberized material on the bottom because this doesn't weigh a lot. So when you have cables plugged in, if they're kind of taut, it'll pull this backwards a bit. I'm not really sure why they went that route and didn't put something to kind of, I guess just plant it a little bit better when you're using it. I think I would have preferred for the USB port to be on the front here, maybe with some sort of like, like just kind of plastic flap over it. And I would have preferred for the game card slot, which is right here, by the way, because it does take physical Vita games as well. In fact, I have one in here now. I believe this is Sly Cooper. I was playing some Sly Cooper to check it out, but I would have preferred this to have kind of its own slot on the front here, maybe next to the USB port, because you mostly use the USB port to charge your controller and to have your cable coming out from around the back is a little odd, especially with all of this blank space on the front here. A spot to put your uh, game in that's just like a, maybe a, just like a little plastic door that you push through to put this in would have been a lot better rather than have this strange like door flap here. It's not easy, I would say, since this is a set top box and not just a handheld that you're holding at all times to just pop the games in and out. Now this is just the base bundle. So it has our power cable, which it is a two part power cable. So we have our little infinity plug here and then our plug for the wall. And then we have our little power box on this side. Like I said, it's a five volt adapter. So as long as you can find that same exact power tip there, if you lose this, you should still be able to match it up. And then we have our HDMI cable down here along with some paperwork that I probably won't be able to read unless they have uh, kind of an English section as well, but it mostly just shows up, shows us, of course, how to set all of this up. Speaking of setting it up, I did play quite a bit of this just to check it out. Now, the thing that was really strange to me about this system, it doesn't play all the Vita games. It's literally a Vita that has a hard time playing Vita games. I 
Okay, I guess. It, it's very, very odd that they went that route, but a lot of it has to do with the Vita itself just having so many features like the back touch, for example, where that was used in certain games. And then of course the front touch. And when it first launched, it was just using the PlayStation 3 controller. There wasn't really any way to emulate that. Now we did eventually get the PlayStation 4 controller, so the DualShock 4 to work on the system. And that of course had a touchpad, but I guess they couldn't account for the people using PlayStation 3 controllers because at that point, you would have this compatibility checklist of, do you have the right controller? Do you have the right patch? Some games didn't work at launch, but then were patched in later, like Killzone, for example, which is a very good looking game still on the Vita, didn't work at launch. You needed a patch. And then there's some head scratchers like Wipeout, why doesn't Wipeout work on this system? That is a game that runs at 60 frames and would probably look really, really good on here, especially on a bigger TV, but it doesn't work. In fact, the list is a lot longer than I thought it would be. So you might be wondering then, why did this thing even exist if it had a hard time running Vita games? What was Sony's strategy here with this system? Well, the best answer I could find is when Andrew House mentioned that this would have been a good way for them to get into China. See, at the time, of course, China wasn't allowing the sale of game consoles and all this is very strict. They've loosened up on that a little bit since then. In fact, around the time that this went discontinued, the PlayStation 4 started showing up in China. But the idea here is that Sony could sell this as just a streaming box, right? So it's a streaming box that, oh, just happens to play Vita games, right? You know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink there. And of course it has access to the PlayStation Network, so it can play some classic PlayStation 1 titles as well, but it plays Hulu. So we're good there. What's really funny is I remember watching Netflix a lot on my original Vita back in the day, but it was so buggy on here and they never fixed it, but hackers eventually whitelisted a lot of games and Netflix just all of a sudden started working as well. This is a system that was propped up at the time by people in the community who wanted to play games on this system. That's just, Sony for some reason just couldn't make it work, but then here come some people in their free time and all of a sudden a bunch of games work start to finish. Not all of them though. Uncharted, for example, would not work because of course it did use some features from the Vita that were not uh, available on the PlayStation TV specifically in some mini games. Anyway, we can go ahead and take this guy apart. Now, the nice thing about the PlayStation TV is it's not super difficult from what I've seen online to get apart. It has a plate on the bottom here that will pry off. And then inside there's really not a lot of screws to deal with. Now we can see all of the clips that we have to pop up here. And the reason companies will do these with like clips, it, it saves them some space rather than have to have screws going through the bottom here. Clipping around the sides will allow them to then put screws underneath of here if they have to screw down say a heat sink or whatnot, it'll just make it a lot easier to keep the profile of the system small. And that was clearly something they were trying to do. This is, this is kind of heavy, to be honest. It's not like a typical little thin piece of plastic. This is a pretty thick, piece of plastic for the bottom plate. Uh, but then we're inside immediately and we were greeted with this metal shielding here, which I assume is used to of course cool the system. Looks like we just have a couple of screws to take off. All right, and after removing the screws, the plate will lift up. Looks like we have a nice thermal pad right here. I don't know if there's anything underneath of it though. It doesn't look like it from the side here. It looks like this might just be a thermal pad resting on the bottom of the motherboard. Sometimes they will like cool a chip from the bottom as well. That does appear to be what's happening here. So this doesn't appear to be the side with the main chip on it. It's probably on the other side there, but we do have a good look at one of our, what appear to be network chips right here. And we still have a screw that appears to be holding down the motherboard. So once we lift this guy out, we should be able to get a good look at the board overall. All right, there we go. And hey, you know what this reminds me of now that I'm looking at it? This reminds me of like the Super Nintendo, Nintendo classic, how we had that fairly like thick aluminum shield on the other side for a heat sink. That is exactly what this reminds me of. Looks like they are saving some room by doing screws going through both of these. So it kind of clamps it like a, it's almost like a little, like a little sandwich here, right? Where you have a shielding on either side to help cool it, a thermal pad on this side. And then I assume a thermal pad under here where we should find our main ship. And it doesn't look like there's any other screws here. So we pretty much just have to be careful. Lift that up. There we go. This is, this is pretty heavy. So most of the weight for this system are coming from our two plates here. 
And I mean, that's not bad, but I do wish they had that some sort of rubber feet on the bottom just to help it out. So one thermal pad here, it looks like. And then we have our slots for memory card and then our game card. And there's some metal shielding here as well, almost like they're uh, like a heat spreader kind of on top covering the chip. So I guess we can pry that off too. All right, so that guy lifted up, we have uh, another thermal pad. So they went crazy with thermal pads in this system to try to cool this chip passively. They certainly did not want to have to put a fan in here. So we have heat coming off of the back, right? This fairly large thermal pad here, by the way, that covers most of the back and then up to here. And then we have a thermal pad on the top here, a thermal pad underneath. And when I was playing Killzone, for example, it actually didn't get too hot on the, on the top. So they did a pretty good job for the most part with cooling this, but like the Vita itself, is already a handheld that is passively cooled. And from what I'm seeing in here, this looks basically like a shrunken down Vita. Like this is just a Vita in, in a shell. Like that's, that's really it. There's not anything crazy new going on here for the most part. Now they do of course have this HDMI port that is linked up to it. And what's really funny about this is there is some documentation from Sony that talks about how the Vita 1000 was going to have some sort of upscaler in order to put video out, and that the 2000 was going to have it as well, but they opted to go this route instead, creating a separate system. So in a way, if this didn't exist for Sony, they may have already had a hybrid system on the market back in like 2014. And like I said, the hardware in here is essentially the same as the Vita. So we have a Cortex A9, we have 512 megabytes of RAM and then 128 megabytes of VRAM equipped along with the GPU being a quad core power VR SGX. 5434 MPN. And on the other side, we do have some storage, which is nice. Uh, they did drop one gigabyte of memory here. So if you don't have a memory card in, you can still at least save something. Not not a lot. I think this had Minecraft loaded up on it, for example. And uh, when I had to download the patch for Killzone, that was 512 megabytes. So I had to delete it to make room. Oh, and there's our little HDMI scaler chip right here to deal with all of that. Uh, could have been in the Vita 1000 or the 2000 though. Wouldn't that have been cool to have the, the Vita as like a hybrid system? I think that would have worked at least at the time. I guess the one nice thing about the PlayStation TV is it doesn't take much to get it apart. Although I don't really know any reason you would have to take it apart, but there's like, like I said, like six or seven screws and it takes maybe five minutes to get it broken down. So I guess if anything goes wrong with your PlayStation TV, it's a pretty quick disassembly at least. And guys, it's gonna do it here for the PlayStation TV or the PS Vita TV. It was a weird decision from Sony. I think the Vita would have been way better as something that could output to your TV rather than just throw this thing together in hopes that you can get it into China to sell. Nonetheless though, we ended up with a fairly limited system that could have had some serious potential outside of Sony just, you know, forgetting about it and discontinuing it after a year in the United States. But let me know what you guys thought about the PlayStation TV. Do you already have one? Were you planning to get one for a collection or maybe you were looking to hack it because once you do hack one of these, it opens up a lot more. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoy it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.